Oh, what's up everybody and welcome to the Ant-Man channel. It is Tuesday the uh, 10th of February 2015 and I'm your host Ant-Man. And as always, you know, I got some, some interesting stuff to cover. Um, you know, unlike the real news, which, is, which just keeps you distracted with like, you know, bad polls and, you know, mixed numbers that, you know, are not really uh, accurate <laughs> when it comes to the economy, you know what I mean? I'll tell you, you know, straight up that I get my information from very reliable sources and they're um, not they're not people who mess around when it comes to defending religious liberty in this country or uh, pro uh, proclaiming truth. People who are really bold in their faith and bold in, in, in their patriotism man. and you know what I mean? There's nothing to be ashamed of when you're when you can appreciate, you know what I mean? The, the liberty and freedom that you have been given in this country and. What a great thing it is to actually, you know, have a constitution and all that in a Republican form of government. It's really amazing. So it's, it's a work of art that's very rarely appreciated in our time. And it's because people just don't appreciate what real art is anymore. There's no, uh, when there's no like morality or spiritual uh, influence in the culture, there's no inspiration and there's no good art. You know what I mean? Uh, Wretched TV put out a video the other day. It was pretty funny because when you compare art, man, to like where, you know, the, before the modern era, like where people were, you know, very influenced by church and Christianity, where they accepted it and back in those days, they they had, you know, great artists, man. Nowadays, like where, you know, the postmodern era where the, you got the new, the new age spiritualism, all the type of art that is today is just gross and it's all for like shock value and it's, there's no real like, there's no real uh, virtue in it. It's just like open for interpretation. It's just whatever you want it to be that's what it means and that that really does reflect on the ideology people have these days is that postmodernistic rel more uh, moral relativistic type of ideology where everything's okay there's no real truth uh, there's no there's no right and wrong and it's just like wow anything goes huh <laughs> like all right i can see where this kind of society goes man it goes back to pyramids and human sacrifice if you ask me but Hey man, that's my channel. I speak it how it is and you know what I mean? Welcome to it. Subscribe and uh, we'll, I'll just get on with the news. I've got an article in front of me from ChristianPost.com. It is, uh, this was posted yesterday. It is by Anagra Kumar, which is a Christian Post contributor. This is entitled Life Church TV. Pastor Craig Groeschel says, God doesn't want you happy. Whoa, what does that mean? Especially for a lot of us, you know, maybe a lot of us that are Pentecostal Christian may not understand what he means by this. Let's get into it. Craig Groeschel, Senior Pastor of Life Church TV, speaks at the New Spring Leadership Conference in Anderson, South Carolina on uh, September 6, 2012. South Carolina. Craig Groeschel, the, finding, the founding and pa uh, senior pastor of the Oklahoma-based Life Church TV megachurch, said it in a sermon that it may sound... Uh, <laughs> That it may sound good when someone says God wants us to be happy, but the truth is otherwise. Oh, uh, man. I, I, before I go on, I just have to say that sometimes, even pastors that I like, and I'm not going to put them on blast or anything, but they'll they'll use happiness and joy interchangeably as if they mean the same thing, and they don't. Let's just be, let's be wise and discerning over these things, right? Let's want to seek after what is right what is uh, proper and uh, you know what I mean? Uh, let's not confuse things. Let's not dumb things down. We're smart enough to understand the distinction and the, to, to be able to distinguish, uh, you know what I mean, truth from falsehood. So we should be able to do that. Uh, Craig Grosho, the founder, I just read that, Pastor Grosho preached about what he called the theology of happiness. A part of a sermon series, God never said that. He said the belief that God wants us to be happy can be problematic for at least three reasons. One, it leads us to conclude that whatever makes us happy must be right, and whatever makes us unhappy must be wrong. Big frowny face. Two, it could also make us believe that any discomfort, delay, or risk cannot be God's will. And three, without even knowing it, we can begin to worship money and comfort. Does that sound uh, very familiar to us Westerners? I don't think it, uh, you know, I don't think that we can deny that. Uh, you know, honestly, that that is a common trait that you see in the what a lot of us call false converts is that they're 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 really not transformed and they're really not following after Christ. They're being sold this this worldly 
uh, message that God is giving you a comfortable lifestyle, that He's going to give you everything you want and you're going to be happy all the time. And it's not the truth. Uh, do we have joy and peace and all these good things? Yes, absolutely. But are we going to dumb it down and cheapen what the grace of God? No. Just because it's hard to swallow? No, it's like medicine. It's good for you. Take it. Be a man. Gird your loins and be ready to take on the truth face to face. That's what the word of God's like. It's gird up your loins and be a man and listen to what's true and right and stop playing games and grow up. That's really what it is. I mean, I'm not God. I'm not going to ever try to, you know, art <laughs> articulate it in a better way. I can never do that. But that's the straight up way that, God, you know, people play games with you, but God doesn't play games with you. He just tells you straight up how it is. And people play games with you because they cater to your sensitivity to maybe your emotional response to these questions, these hard questions in life that may, you know, get us to doubt God or not like God. But we have to seek truth for what it is, man. And a lot of it has to do with ourselves, that we're corrupt and that we need to forsake the world and our own desires and our own sinful nature. And we need to chase after the Lord. So anyways, whoo! I could preach, my friend. But anyways, um, God does not exist to serve us, but we exist to serve Him. The pastor reminded the listeners, God is not a cosmic Coke machine. He added that whatever we want and whenever we want it, we can just push the button and get it. Wow, he, he really went off. Many of us wrongly expect a raise in the salary or our favorite team to win just because we are doing the right thing because I pushed the God button, Groschel said. It's as if... If I'm not happy, God failed me. That's the problem with the cultural Christian world or the American version of Christianity today, he explained. The pastor gave the example of his two sons, both of who play football. He said when they play and are happy, he delights in them. However, my highest priority is not their happiness, but their behavior. Similarly, he added his presence and his will is the goal. He wants you to pursue himself. Grosho gave the audience two principles to know when God doesn't want us to be happy. One, God doesn't want you to be happy when it causes you to do something sinful or stupid, which is most likely, you know, the same thing in and of itself. He said, and read out 1 Peter 1.15, But just as you, er, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Giving an example, he said, if you're not happy in your marriage, that doesn't mean you can leave your spouse. Or if you can, or if you find happiness in pornography, that doesn't make it legitimate, he added. Two, God doesn't want you to be happy when it only when it's only based on the things of this world, Groschel said. Based on 1 John 2, 15 through 17, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone's loves or if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Happiness is not about better possessions, right relationships, or perfect experiences, he stressed. His, his presence alone is sufficient. Don't listen to the culture. He added, God wants you blessed, not happy, more than happy. However, that, that doesn't mean you will not get sick, or you will not lose your job, or things will go your way, he cautioned. On the contrary, you can feel God's presence even when you're in the middle of a storm, when things don't seem right, he said. You can experience joy unspeakable because he is building you up using your experiences. You'll experience peace and that is beyond your understanding. Peace that is beyond your understanding, he added. He quoted Psalm 37, 4. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Uh, when God is your highest goal, he will give you the desires of your heart. He explained, urging the audience to lower their standards for this world. You were not designed for this world. You were created for eternity. That goes for every single one of you listening to me right now, too. Uh, there's a Christ-shaped vacuum in your heart, which cannot be filled by any created thing, he, he said in conclusion. In the promo for the sermon series, the mega church is encouraging Christians to be careful in giving a wrong advice to others. We love offering little nuggets of advice, support, or sympathy. They come in handy when we want people to feel better. But what if the guidance you're giving or receiving just isn't true? What if God never said that? Yeah, a good point for Craig Groschel to say. He's one of the bolder guys out there like Matt Chandler who are blessings, I'm sure, to their congregation. 
But we need more men of God like this to stand up for the truth and not be afraid to speak it in a postmodern society uh, where offending people is the highest crime. 